present time promises to be the dawn of a new era in the diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. For the past 10 years, my colleagues and I at UCLA have been working to perfect targeted prostate biopsy and ultimately focal therapy of prostate cancer. Since the work began, more than 3,500 prostate biopsies have been performed all using MRI ultrasound fusion in a multidisciplinary effort that includes urologists, radiologists, pathologists, and biomedical engineers. The studies which form the basis of this video have been supported in large part by grants from the National Cancer Institute. In this video, we show a method based on this research for planning focal therapy of prostate cancer. Here we show in four parts how partial gland ablation with high intensity focused ultrasound starts with MRI, continues through targeted biopsy, becomes refined through use of planning software, and is then implemented. The aim is to provide adequate treatment margins for complete ablation of the tumor, while at the same time sparing as much normal prostate tissue as possible. Planning focal therapy actually begins with a multiparametric MRI, which allows visualization of the cancer within the prostate gland. The three key MRI parameters are T2-weighted imaging, diffusion-weighted imaging, and dynamic contrast-enhanced imaging. The T2-weighted imaging is useful to evaluate the lesion margins. The diffusion-weighted imaging allows us to assess cancer aggressiveness, and dynamic contrast-enhanced imaging allows us to evaluate how the lesion enhances. These three key sequences allow the radiologist to assign a PIRAD score to a lesion. This particular example is a PIRADS-5 lesion. The PIRAD score indicates the likelihood of that lesion containing cancer. The higher the score, the more likely a cancer. For example, this PIRADS-5 lesion has approximately an 80% chance of containing a cancer. This lesion is then contoured in 3D, which prepares this set of images for co-registration with MRI ultrasound fusion to guide targeted biopsy. Targeted and systematic biopsy of the prostate is performed using an image fusion device. The prostate is visualized with ultrasound, segmented, and an isolated model of the organ is created in 3D. The stored MRI and the real-time ultrasound are then co-registered, which allows for the region of interest or target within the prostate to be visualized within the working model. Both targeted and systematic biopsies are taken, and the intraprostatic locations of those biopsy sites are stored in the device. Information from these biopsy sites will then be used in focal therapy planning. Extra samples from the periphery of the lesion can add precision to the planning. To optimize focal therapy planning, we began by comparing preoperative MRI with whole mount pathology. We identified men with prostate cancer who were scheduled for radical prostatectomy, and we 3D printed a patient-specific mold for each of them. The excised prostate was sliced using the mold, allowing us to very precisely correlate pathologic findings with MRI. The results of this two-year study, combining data from over 100 men, revealed that the actual tumor volume was, on average, three times greater than MRI predictions. This means that it is necessary to treat both the MR visible lesion and a safety margin of tissue around it. Safety margins in excess of 15 millimeters would be necessary if they were drawn isotropically. However, we found that the best margins are what's called anisotropic, extending about one centimeter towards the center of the margin, but closer to two centimeters along the capsule. This approach gives an excellent chance of treatment success, and it helps reduce the amount of treated healthy tissue. We use the open source software 3D Slicer to visualize and better understand individual treatment plans. Here, you can see our example patient's MRI and 3D prostate model. After the safety margin is applied, the recommended treatment volume is a pretty substantial portion of the prostate. However, we can further refine this model by registering the positive, orange, and negative, blue, tracked biopsy cores. If any positive cores are found outside the target, margins can be expanded in that direction. Conversely, if enough negative tissue is found outside the target, as seen here, 
Our data shows that it's very unlikely for cancer to extend beyond that line. So the margin can be contracted to exclude the negative core and all the tissue that is shadowed behind it. We also can overlay anatomical structures, such as the urethra, and account for it during treatment planning. These models are registered with real-time ultrasound during the procedure, enabling the physician to make the best and most informed treatment decisions. Using a recently approved device as a treatment model, the plan is then entered into the HIFU device for targeted ablation. After visualizing the prostate with ultrasound and segmenting it within the treatment device, the plan is then fused with real-time images. At that point, the treating physician then applies clinical judgment to determine the actual limits of ablation. Balancing the desired cancer control against the potential adverse effects of margin extension. For example, the urethra may be excluded from the ablation zone, if so desired. Having imported the treatment plan, focal ablation of the cancer then proceeds according to that plan and could be via HIFU, cryotherapy, or even laser ablation. Six months after a focal therapy treatment, we perform an MRI and a targeted biopsy of the ablation zone to check our results. At this point in time, we would like our focal therapy patients to be men with intermediate risk prostate cancer, confined to one part of the prostate, and with a prostate volume of approximately 50 cc's or less. Using the guidelines that we have outlined in this video, we believe that focal therapy of prostate cancer is a very reasonable option for many men.